Hey, Tech Savvy Agent fans. So let me walk you through the process here. Overall, it is fairly easy, but there were some things that were a little bit confusing that I think I might be able to help you with, and especially the uh, part about exporting your information into your contact management system. So let's get started immediately. If you want to create a form, obviously you need to have a Google account like we talked about in the post there. And if you just go to drive.google.com, uh, you'll have access, or if you don't have a Google account and you go there, uh, it'll allow you to sign up. Or if you do, you can fill in your information and you'll have access to all of your documents. Now once you get into this screen, if you go to the create button, you're going to notice a forms option. And when you click the forms option, it immediately loads you into a new form screen here. And we can title this so you can call this your uh, buyer's questionnaire. Buyers, and I'll just do it quick. Oh, and you could choose a template as well. So you can scroll down through and uh, I'll choose the the note paper one, I probably don't recommend choosing this, go with something clean and fancy, but uh, I'll go with something uh, a little bit interesting there with the note paper one. So we have our buyer's questionnaire. You can go through and start forming your questions now for your form, which can be shared through email, it can be shared on social sites, this can be uh, updated and uploaded to your website. So there's a number of ways of, of getting this out, and we can uh, start with a basic question here first, and we can start with first name. So most lead generation systems, or I'm sorry, most contact management systems uh, have the first name and the last name separated rather than in one. So we'd want to start off with, uh, with the first name there. We can choose the type of question. Now, obviously, we don't want multiple choice for the first name, so we're going to choose text. And then we can hit done. So we have our first name in. To add a second question, it's pretty simple. Just hit add item on the bottom. And... Obviously, if we did the first name, we should go with the last name now as well. It'll remember that you want text uh, from the previous question. You hit the Done button again, and you can also make this required as well by checking off the box. That means they have to fill out their first and last name if you check off that box. And I'll hit the Done button again, and then we can add an item. And uh, let's say this was going to be you know, a, a buyer's questionnaire. Uh, we can ask, you know, when uh, are you planning on moving? and we can have text or paragraph text, something a little bit bigger there. So in case they want to add a longer answer in, you could, you could hook that up and hit the done button. And then you can also do some multiple choice questions here too. I'll just do one more question so we're not bogging down on this part. Uh, I'll just name this multiple choice. You guys can ask what, whatever you would like. And we'll switch this over to multiple choice. And then we can go through and we can cho uh, choose and type in all of our options. And it seems like you can create a lot of different options here. So I don't know if there's a, a, a limit or not, but I'll, I'll go with the five options. So there are the questions that, that we have. I'm going to hit the done button. Pretend uh, we went through and we created, created a beautiful buyer's questionnaire or a seller's questionnaire here and uh, we think it looks pretty good and we're ready to begin sharing this, we can do that. Well, first, before we begin sharing it, we want to go down to the bottom. I'll explain what these terms are. Show link to submit another response. If you want someone to be able to fill out the form a few times, you can do that. Um, probably want to uncheck that for most of the forms you're going to create. Publish and show a public link to form results. Now, if you're doing uh, a questionnaire and or uh, a poll, a survey, and you want everyone else to see the results from your survey because you expect to get a lot of answers, you can check that off. Now for a buyer's questionnaire, I probably don't recommend checking that button off uh, because you don't want everyone else to see the results of a survey, so of this particular survey. But if you were doing something different, uh, you, you could have that or you do have that capability. So we're finished. We can uh, click the send form button on the bottom. We can view the live form up here on the top. Let's click that right now and just see what it looks like. So we selected our form, first name, last name. There's our paragraph response, our multiple choice. That's what it's going to look like on the web. We can make any adjustments or changes here. We can go ahead and change the theme if we would like. I can scroll down through and if we want the, uh, the gray here instead, we can choose the gray color and then we can preview that and see if we like the gray better than the blue. So either way, it's pretty easy to create these forms. Now when we're ready to begin sending this form out, we go down to the bottom, you hit the send form button. You can send it out via email or you can simply just copy the link here that you see on the screen. And if we highlight the link, 
we can copy it, we can send it out, we can post it to social media websites, or you can use the embed button. And the embed button is going to give you, it's going to give you the HTML code uh, that will allow you to paste this onto your website. So you can have this form embedded on your website, choose the size of the form. Uh, pretty simple to do. So let's let's fill out this here. I'm going to fill it out real quick, and when we come back, I'll show you how we can pull that data and download it into our contact management system. Okay, so now that people filled out our form, how do we access that information? Well, it's pretty simple. Because you have your Google account, everything's saved back in your Google Drive. And when you go back into your Google Drive system, on the right-hand side of the screen, you're going to see your activity. And you're going to be able to see the, the form that you just created. I created the buyer questionnaire. And then you're going to be able to see the responses. And you can click on either one to go back in and, and edit the form or view the responses. And if I go in and I check out the responses here, notice how it puts it into a convenient spreadsheet here for me. This is the spreadsheet option that's available through the Google, uh, the Google Docs. And you can see the answers are waiting for me right here. Now, how do we get this information into our contact management system? Well, I'll walk you through an example with, uh, with Top Producer because that's the contact management system I have access to, but it's pretty much going to be a similar process uh, for other systems that are out there. So we have this information in our form, and if we go up to the File button, we can hit Download As, and most systems out there will accept a CSV file, comma separated value. So if I choose comma separated value, it's going to download the buyer questionnaire, and which it just did. I'll just pull that right onto my uh, right onto my desktop there. And now I can go into my contact management system of choice. And if I'm doing it in Top Producer, they have an import contacts button, so I'll click that key, and it's going to ask me to choose the file to import and we will look for our buyer questionnaire. Where did I, oh yeah, it would be under the B. That would make sense, Steve. Uh, so we're gonna select the buyer questionnaire. I'll hit the open button. It brings the information right in and it lists the data that it found on the form. And it tries to do its best job here of matching up the information on the fly. So it found first name and first name. So, so here's where we're gonna map it to our system. And, and again, any system that you're gonna use, you're gonna have to do this mapping. Uh, but you can see that Top Producer did a, did a pretty decent job. It also found uh, here that there was a timestamp of when the person filled it out and it's gonna throw that into the notes section. So, so that's pretty good. Um, we can choose the other two fields. You can see that it's highlighted there. So we can choose where we want the other two fields to go. When are you planning on moving? We'll just add that into uh, the notes section here too. Uh, and we had a multiple choice question. Uh, maybe that was uh, that would be a, a multiple choice question that, that we could use here. But as you can see, there's a number of different uh, options that relate to our contacts that we would have in our database. I'm just going to have this go into the notes section uh, as well. And finally, at the top, we can choose if this is a future prospect, if this is a person that's engaged, which probably they're engaged and not future. We don't know yet. Um, if we want to provide a status for everyone that we are importing in. Uh, the six month person might be in the future. We can, they're close enough to be engaged too. So we can set engage, set a contact type. It's gonna download into my database. I hit the start import button. And a few seconds later, voila, here are my contacts. Imported in, updated two contacts there for me. I can view the contact information. And you can see that I, I did a test before this. That's why you're seeing a second one there on the screen. But the one on the top here, if I hit the View Contacts button, uh, it should open up the two contacts, John Jones and Joe Smith. And all of their information should be right here with everything else in the notes section. There we go. When do you plan on moving? Now, multiple choice question, option one. So now we have a contact record. Uh, probably one to ask for a phone number as well and an email address, uh, but you guys get the point there. It's simple to go through, create your own questionnaire, simple to import it into your database. You can do it in a matter of seconds, um, and it's better than sitting there and keying in uh, all of the information on your own. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about Google Forms. There's a lot of other detailed information about it out there on the internet if this sparked your interest. Uh, and come on back to Tech Savvy Agent because you know we'll have more information here. Thanks.